Welcome to Baby Boomer Tales. Thank you for riding along today. My name is Jim. You can find us at babyboomertales.com. You can also find us on Facebook, on LinkedIn. You can tune in to our YouTube channel and watch both videos and listen to our audio podcasts. You can email us at babyboomertales at gmail.com. We try to respond to most emails. I can't promise that we would, but we may. All depends on how much time this old boy has, if you know what I mean. You know, after my dog Maxie died, I really thought that the wildlife around here would take over. Between the time that old Homer died and we got Maxie as a puppy years and years ago, the deer started coming right up to the house and eating the bushes and the flowers and all that stuff. Well, this time we don't have that. Now, we still see a lot of wildlife, and once in a while a deer will get kind of close to the house. They're usually babies, though, little guys that aren't fawns anymore, but they're not fully grown either. They'll come traipsing across sometimes. What I do have encroaching on my area here though are bunnies and squirrels like nobody's business. Now they don't do enough damage for me to go out and try to eradicate them. I'm not going to kill something just to kill it. I would like to shoo it away. I have the spray for deer and raccoons and stuff. You spray it around like fruit trees. I'll spray it around fruit trees so they don't eat the peaches say. But I tried spraying it on the porch, and after about three days, you see a squirrel or a bunny again up on the porch. So whatever. You know, it's weird. I have not seen really anything except squirrels and bunnies for the last week. There'll come times when I see great horned owls. I'll see a lot of deer. I'll see a coyote or two. I see some wild turkeys running across the yard or something. And I haven't seen any of that in the last couple of weeks. I don't know what causes things to ebb and flow like that, where you see a lot of wildlife and then you see none. I've said all this because I really thought I'd see more once the dog was gone. The dog did a wonderful job of keeping that stuff away from around here. But maybe I gave her more credit than really what was happening. I don't think so. I think a dog out there peeing, marking their area and stuff, does keep stuff like that away. Now, don't get me wrong. I like to see wildlife. I do. We're very blessed out here being able to sit back recording a podcast and see a coyote walk right across the front yard like doesn't have a care in the world. I think that's fascinating, actually. I've had coyote hunters come by the house, want my permission for them to hunt the coyote on my property, and I always turn them down. I have no issues with a coyote. I have no chickens, though, so I have no issues with a coyote trying to kill my chickens. I don't really look at them as a vicious animal. I look at them as a dog that has forage for himself for dinner. So a little baby kitten or something or even a cat, kind of they probably put in the same category as a rabbit. Now, I think a cat would fight back a little better than a rabbit, but still, you know, I have no cats, no dogs, no nothing anymore. What has become of me? Most of my life, I've always had a dog. I tell myself it's because I'm older and we travel now, and a dog would kind of tie us down. And maybe that's because I don't have these little house dogs. My dogs are outside dogs. Always have been, always will be if I get another one. I can't say that, you know. Maybe I'd want a little muffin to sit on my lap while I watch the TV. Now, I know some of you have that situation. I'm not making fun of you. It's just foreign to me. I do know that a dog or even a cat makes a wonderful companion. Maybe especially as we grow older. Sure beats being alone.
Anyway, let's get on with this. When my brother John and my brother Don and my cousin Gary went camping up at Dad's farm, up there, up on the mesa above my little hometown, that little town in north central Colorado Rocky Mountains, the town itself stood 8,000 feet above sea level. So up there on the mesa, it was a little bit higher than that. Dad had a eight acres we called the farm. It had a barn and a pump house. The whole property was fenced in. We'd have a few horses around there, cut hay every fall and have to put that hay in that barn. Well, they decided to go camping up there one fall, sleep in the barn, and they dropped a flashlight down between the bales of hay and they freaked out and tore all that nice stacked up hay toward all part trying to get that flashlight in fear of they're going to start a fire with that flashlight. I always have a flashlight in the glove box. Used to be you'd have to check the batteries all the time or it'd be just the batteries wore out. Maybe not even using it. That was back in the day before the alkaline batteries. I still have flashlights in every glove box every car. In 1899, the English inventor David Mizell invented the first flashlight. It took three D-sized batteries, and even though he invented it in America, he was from England, and he called it a torch. I do believe our English cousins still call flashlights torches. Now for the unusual fact of the week. Flashlights got their name because the batteries did not hold a charge long enough for it to be a long-lasting light. So what you would do as the light started to dim, you'd flash it off and flash it back on, and then the light was bright again. And you had to continue doing that as you were walking in the dark or whatever. Henceforth, the name, flashlight. <laughs> Flashlights are used by many, many different types of people. Policemen, a flashlight is a valuable tool for them, especially when you work the night shift. Firefighters, they have to have a flashlight. Home inspectors, if you've ever sold your house or buying the house, watch these home inspectors go around and they use a flashlight to look under every nook and cranny there is. Mechanics use flashlights to look inside your engine of your car or underneath your car, whatever. Security guards carry flashlights. Doctors say ah, look in your ear. Those are flashlights they're using. All different kinds of Working folks use flashlights. Miners use a form of a flashlight. They have a light on their hard hat, and it's powered by a kind of a large rechargeable battery they carry on their belt so that they're not stuck down in the darkness of a mine with no light. That battery pack can last an eight-hour shift easily. Our song of the week is Friends, written by Bernie Toppin and Elton John. It was recorded in 1970 and released in 1971 by Elton John. It was his second song to reach the top 40. His first song to reach the top 40 was Your Song. Friends was the title song of the soundtrack of the movie titled Friends. The movie didn't do very well in the box office, but this song always reached a place in my heart that never left. I hope the day will be a lighter highway, for friends are found on each and every road. Can you ever think of any better way for the lost and weary travelers to go? Back when I was first married, and we started having kids and all that stuff. I never had night lights. And back then in the 70s and early 80s, we didn't have all these ambient lights like on your range or your microwave or the television or the computer screen. 
didn't have any of that action. And since we didn't have any plug-in night lights, if you got up in the middle of the night to go somewhere, you needed something. And I always had a flashlight by my bed. Well, I was so attracted to flashlights, I had all different kinds of flashlights. I had all different sizes of flashlights. I had great big ones that took 5D batteries. I had little ones that were like flat as a pancake that took one AAA battery. I had flashlights on my key ring. I had a flashlight that had a AM FM radio built into it. One of my favorite flashlights was a mag light, little black light that you could adjust how the light was dispersed if it was wide angle or pinpoint, very bright. I had a flashlight, and I still have it, that has really no replaceable batteries. You shake it, and then you'll get a light for you know, 30 seconds, 45 seconds maybe, in case of emergency. I have kept that because you just never know. When my kids were junior high, high school age, had a lot of friends hanging around, all that stuff, all the time. Well, Allie had a great pal named Keith. They palled around a lot. I'm not really sure how sweet they were on each other, but they were fast, fast friends. Keith was around a lot. His folks were friends of ours, and they lived on the street in back of us. In fact, our yards butted up against each other, and it was just separated by a fence. Well, somehow, Keith nicknamed me Flashlight Man. I had flashlights for everything. Made sure my girls had flashlights, my wife had flashlights. We had flashlights everywhere. I had boxes of flashlights, all different kinds of flashlights. And so I was flashlight man. I had a flashlight by my bed, no doubt, because if I had to get up in the middle of the night, I had a flashlight. If the lights went off, everybody had a flashlight. I doled them out. Here's flashlights until the power comes back on. I was flashlight man. Even after I started having grandchildren, I remember my oldest, I'd buy him flashlights. I'd keep them for him. I remember one time, he goes, Papa, I need another flashlight. He had, you know, several with him. And I'd become attached to some of them. I'd given them, and I was saving them for them. And <laughs> this is a bad thing, but I didn't let them have a couple of them because I became so attached to those flashlights. I mean, if he actually needed a flashlight, if he was out of flashlights, well, that was different. I'd give him a flashlight. He could have any of my flashlights. To this day, he could have any of my flashlights. Well, today, I still have some flashlights, like that one you shake up. I have a flashlight sitting over on my other desk. One of these little LED things, you just push a little button and it comes on. They're very bright. That mag light, I carry with me when I go on vacation. I still have a flashlight in my glove box. My wife still has a flashlight in hers. But my phone is my flashlight anymore. You know, telephones do many, many, many things. But one tool that I use very often is the flashlight. Last night, I always go outside and check out the night sky before I go to bed. Look around. Well, there was a little spotlight that we have that's spotted on this fountain we have, and it was out. It's on a timer, and there's no reason for it to be out at all. I went back in the garage and the ground fault outlets were all shining like they worked. So I knew it wasn't that. I turned on the outside lights and the one by the walkout door didn't come on. I thought, oh no, something is crazy happening here. Well, that was just a coincidence. The bulb had burned out on that particular light. So I replaced that and today I have to go out and see why that light doesn't work. But last night, I pulled my phone out, turned on the flashlight, and walked over to where the timer was. Everything appeared to be working okay. I couldn't tell if the timer was working or not. When I could hear better, I could kind of put my ear up to it and hear that little motor running. Those days are gone for me. So I just unplugged it, closed the little outlet door, and I'll go out there sometime today. Where would I be without a flashlight? 
Do you all use a flashlight? I bet you use your phone anymore. The Adventures of Flashlight Man. Brought to you by EverReady or Rayovac or what's that one with the bunny? Bam, 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 bam. A bunny with a drum. <laughs> I no longer need a flashlight when I wake up at night decide to walk around the house or hear a noise or wonder if I turn something off or not. I've got little night lights all around. Even the remote controls on my reclining chairs, the little remotes you push to recline or set up or do your lumbar, that's got lights on it. It's all lit up. I walk into the family room where those chairs are and I've got nice ambient lights so I don't stub my toe. So I don't need to carry a flashlight. And the only flashlight I have sitting by my bed is my phone laying there charging. I've had many nicknames in my life. Jimmy and Earl and Augie and Flashlight Man. I just wish somebody would call me one of those names again. My girl cousins, they still call me Jimmy. But I don't get to see them very, very often. I should just call one up just to hear my name in a nickname form once again. Well, be kind to everybody everywhere you go. You'll feel better about yourself if you are. If you are kind and gentle and helpful and have a smile. I'll be back next Wednesday. Peace out.